Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Football Manager 2016 with Liverpool. And this is the second part, and we are seven games into the league. We're going to be playing Leicester in a couple of moments, and I'll get into how Leicester are doing and how they've got on. And remember, before we go over uh, how we've got on in the previous game so far, and any and all transfers. Now, um, I said I wasn't going to make any particularly big transfers, and as you can see, all the ones here all came in when I uh, before, in fact, I was here. Um, I've let a couple of players go. Um, there's been the main one is this guy Eric Pulgar sold a cent to Schalke for six and a half million um, it just I don't understand what that entire thinking was here the Carl Ancelotti bought him in for just under 14 million pounds played him six times in fact he had one start in the league didn't do a good job to be fair I mean yeah I mean look at that average rating I mean that's just terrible but yeah he seems very he was very unhappy um, and I had to sell him for six and a half million pounds. It just wasn't worth the paper he was written on, contract-wise, that is. So um, I just thought I'd make some money off him. Uh, I sold McConville here, this young lad, for 450k. He was never going to be good enough. Um, Pascal Naffy, or Naffel, I think that's a comment. I can't call myself. That's an I or an L for three million to Sassuolo. Uh, Roman Perro, another French. Uh, real. These are all real players, by the way, I think, except for McConville. I think he might have been a regen. Um, Again, just not utilised at all. I just don't know what they were thinking, really. Uh, and Xavier Roussel, who is a regen, uh, he was sold, uh, again, bought... Oh, in fact, he's gone on loan. I beg your pardon. He's actually a good player. And Moussa Dembele, the, uh, the former Fulham player, is now at Bournemouth, sold him for £2.2 .2 million. So we actually made the profit on him, I think. And, yeah, I just haven't brought any in because I was, re I was reasonably happy with the squad. Um, unfortunately, we've had a few injuries and things like that, and I'm, I'm actually starting to see, you know, how good some of these players actually are. Um, but we'll go over that now with the schedule. So, as we saw, we played Bournemouth and we won 2-0, and it was really easy for Mino and Tizard both scored. And I thought, great, we've got some great heroes in the making. And we carried on, and we won 2-0 again, this time against West Brom, and James Tizard scored 2-2. Two uh, and so did Black Lab, uh, Vaclav Chernik, who isn't actually as good as I thought he was going to be. Yes, he scored here, but he hasn't actually done much else since. But I'll just show you this now. Um, and I was really, really excited, thinking, oh my god, we might have something. I mean, if that is the worst goal you have ever seen. How the hell that goes down to Chernik, I have no idea. I, I didn't even think that was going in. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the single worst goal you've ever seen. But, A, the all count, who cares? But yeah, Chernik, he's still only 22, so there's still plenty of time. But um, I'm going to have to be quite ruthless with some of these players. Even Jordan Henderson, who um, at times I have gone, so what's the point of him? <laughs> you know, Especially when you've got like Coutinho and then Kondogbia, Pjanic on the bench and things like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, coming together reasonably well. But that is a beautiful header by Tizard. He leaps like a salmon and uh, pops it in the back of the net. Then we won 1-0 against Newcastle, and as you can see, 1-0 against City. So we won the opening four without even conceding a goal. Then, as you can see, things went off a little bit. Yeah, went downhill a little bit, so we say. Uh, and Firmino, who, as I say, is so good on this game. He's just brilliant. Uh, with a 50th minute winner here. As you can see, we dominated the game. It was a breakaway. Tizard, I think, got the assist. Pan fantastic pass, and Firmino slots it away. But yeah, he's having an amazing impact as uh, James Tizard here. And here's the 1-0 victory over uh, Manchester City. And it was Tizard again. So that was 3-4 uh, for him. Absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, Man City were just not on, on the day. They were not very good at all. Nathaniel Klein, uh, sort of like he is in real life, really. The, the only consistent one. And uh, it was a tackle, I think, by the number three here. Is that Sanya still? Or is that someone else? Rodriguez it was. And it went straight to the path of Tizard on the spot. And he slotted it home. And as you can see, uh, I think we deserved it. If you look at the stats there. Um, yes, I mean, Raheem Sterling had a good game and Klein had a good game, but Tizard was the one on the spot and he, he got the win for us. And we then played, okay, this is our Champions League group. We've got Zagreb, Zenit and Marseille. Now, I just want to say Marseille are fantastic on this. They um, have always been quite good for me, really, on my saves. Uh, if you may notice they won the Champions League here. I'll just show you real quick. Uh, Champions League win is 2018, just in case you're uh, new to the series or whatever, as I know I do pick up some new viewers um, when I start a new team. Uh, this is the last, uh, here's, here's the last squad they've got out. So you have um, Higuain's there. Uh, Janvier, I recognise that name. He's another name I've, I've heard a few things about Janvier. There's William Lanzini. Um, so, you know, they've got a decent team. Perhaps not as good uh, as it used to be. There's Steven Mandanda, who's the captain. Frank De Boers, the manager. So they've got a good team and a 
a little bit wary of them. But we played Zagreb and won 3-2. So yes, we conceded for the first time. But Salman Rondon came in and he banged a hat-trick in. I couldn't quite believe it. I'll show you the goals here. Um, this was absolutely bizarre. And he was, for the first time, I actually felt confident playing a target man after seeing him because he was big, powerful, strong, what I want him to be, not what Benteke was like at AC Milan and, for that matter, in real life at Liverpool. Um, but, yeah, he's very, very good. Uh, we've also got here Kyle Walker-Peters. And, uh, yeah, he actually does play for Tottenham in real life. So, we have potentially, you have two options there um, for Tottenham in the near future. You can have Kyle Walker and Kyle Walker-Peters. <laughs> which I think is fantastic but we've got him here um, surprise he's actually not very good he's okay I know we got an assist there but as a defender he's a little bit wanting Daniel Sturridge is a complete enigma because he appears to have disintegrated or just like evaporated or something I'm not quite sure or he's been replaced with someone who looks like him because this is not Daniel Sturridge he's terrible he hasn't scored for me he doesn't make an impact on the game uh, he's absolutely horrible. And also, can I just make a point? Salman Rondon has the hardest shot I've ever seen on by anyone on Football Manager. He absolutely smashes it into the back of the net. Uh, there's been saves that uh, I've seen goalkeepers make where they literally can't catch it. It's too strong, and they just punch it away. But because the shot was so powerful in the first place, it just sort of ricochets off the hands. And it like continues building at pace and goes off into like you know, for a corner or something. And it's just... Yeah, like, you might actually see in a moment, but... Uh, we got a 1-1 at Chelsea, which I was reasonably happy with. Uh, Chelsea instantly are 11th in the league. Mourinho is still there. I know it's really funny. But they, of course, have a good team. I know it's, it'd be very easy to make you know, a joke saying, oh, Chelsea, they're a small team, uh, you know, compared to their real-life you know, form at the moment. But um, Matic, of all people, scoring the first goal against me in the Premier League. And it was a lovely finish. So that, I don't know where that came from. But, yeah, uh, if we look again here... Um, who scored? I forgot who scored now actually I think it was Rondon wasn't it, a lovely finish and they actually, if you saw, had a player sent off uh, after just 30 minutes, he got booked after the second and then got sent off, so maybe you could make a case for us, should, should have win, uh, won here, uh, but I think if you'd offered me a draw beforehand, I probably would have taken it then we've sort of gone on a bit of a slide the Swansea game was sort of, you know when every fibre of your being is telling you that you should win this very easily, but what you're seeing is not what you expect. <laughs> it's like, and this is the start of something that I've, I've noticed and I'm trying to get it out of the team uh, or trying to not make, make them do it anymore, which is um, playing these sort of chipped, lofted passes, which I really hate. They do it in real life as well. Jordan Henderson does it a lot, um, I've noticed. And, you know, it's a pass that could easily be made on the floor. You know, you could just pass it along the floor and fine. But what they do is they sort of loft it into the air a little bit and it gives the opposition a chance to actually get the ball. They have an opportunity to intercept it and there really shouldn't be. It's because if you put it in the air, you're not in control of it. Therefore, the opposition have a chance of getting it back. And we do it time and time again. I'll show you. I don't think we actually... And they also have went other man sent off as well. So um, very, very frustrating, and we had uh, 14 shots there, 10 of which were off target. Theo Walcott also plays for them, and from a free kick, surprise, surprise, um, the Bratu scored, and um, yeah, that's all we were playing with, and I mean, the finishing today was terrible, I mean, that, that was Daniel Sturridge, that was the last time he played for me, I'm not, well, I think it might, I might have played him one more time, I think I gave him one more chance, but I'm fed up with him, I can't, I've said, I've got to be ruthless, he's not doing it for me, he's already, he already started the season on a rotten streak, and he's carried on. We also lost to Tottenham. This one was... Oh, God, where do I start with this? <sighs> Bullshit, that's all I can say. Gondopia went off injured. And friggin' Shea Ojo, who we just sold... <laughs> I didn't, but uh, Carlo Ancelotti sold... To Tottenham for 7 million. Only goes and scores against us. I would love to have used Ojo. But another friggin' corner. Complete um, mess here. Look at this. Top ends as well. Unbelievable. Um, and yeah, we, we were disappointing here. Um, the front line just didn't do it. And as, as well, we were just making passes. We were giving the ball away too much. It was so sloppy. And it's just, it's so frustrating. I can't, it's the only way I can describe it. Also, I just want to introduce you to a young lad here, Craig Gannon. Uh, it could be quite good. Started to throw him in here. He gave a half decent performance uh, against Swansea after bringing him on. So I thought I'll start him against Tottenham. He was okay, nothing major. 
Uh, then we played Zenit St. Petersburg, James Tizard once again, bagging a goal. We dominated this one, thankfully. Zenit went great. The, 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 I find the Russian teams, or, or just even the Eastern European teams, just aren't very good when they go away from home um, against you know Western teams. I'm fine, but uh, that's a belter from James Tizard. Lovely finish. And we lost to Norwich. <laughs> James Tizard did score again. Unfortunately, uh, Zaza and Murphy with the winners for Norwich, who were doing really well. I'll show you this. I just can't quite believe how poor we've all of a sudden come. Certain players uh, have... Also, I think it was around about, yeah, around about the Zenit Tottenham game. A few players got injured, I think. Um, the reason why Walker Peters is suddenly playing, despite the fact he, I me mean, saying he's terrible, was because the Lazar, or I think it's how you say it, our left back, has been uh, injured for three weeks. So, and I think if I'm going to have to bolster this team in um, January, we'll have to be at the fullback position because we don't have too many uh, at the moment. I think we've got like three who can play. That's a cross at right back and left back. It's quite hard. So yeah, this is um, not very good. The moment and not very good defending. Um, Goalkeeper, perhaps, you know, he got caught at the near post. Simon Mignolet is guilty of that as well in real life, for the record. Yeah, he played so well as well, I think, against, who was it? Was it against Tottenham or was it against, yeah, Tottenham here. 9.1, he played amazingly well. He was making, it could have been on three or four, to be honest with you. So, it's, it's annoying, very, very annoying. So, we're not slipping down the table, thankfully, because it's still adjusting and trying to get its head straight, as the Premier League always is. But this is the team we're going to be playing now. Uh, if you look here, if you look against Norwich, I have changed the formation. I've changed a few little things. We started with Ancelotti's old formation of four one two two one, or four three three, I guess. I don't know. It depends how you want to call that. Um, but we're going to go back to the old Milan formation. I'm going to have a defensive midfielder with three midfields and then two up top because it makes sense. I mean, Rondon and Tizard are doing very well. Storage might even be able to benefit. Who knows? He might benefit, but considering how poor he is at the moment and how poor he has been for a long time, he's on 130 grand a week. It's not acceptable. The transfer list and people want him. Uh, Bournemouth want him, but uh, I don't even know if they'll be able to sustain his wages, quite frankly, so I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, Ryan Kent is, as I say, the only player who um, is actually in the academy at the moment, who uh, is in real life, that is, who is here. Uh, so... He's just come back from a broken foot, I think. So, literally, he's just played his first game back in the reserves. So, he should be in the team soon. He's okay, Kent. He's not amazing. Um, he could be decent, but I, I think, considering he's already 23 years old, I don't think he's going to hit that potential now. But he might be someone decent to have around. He is that type of player who I always point to and say, do you know what? He, he isn't a great player by any means, but he plays for the team he supports, or you know, he plays for a team that he holds dear to his heart, that type of thing. And they seem to just turn in these performances. As I mentioned it about a few videos ago, and I'll bring it up again. He might be the one, I'm hoping. Tizard as well, potentially. But Tizard actually looks really good, so um, I expect that of him. But yeah, here's, uh, here's the team here. Let's go into it now against Leicester. I'll show you Leicester's team as well. So we've got uh, Rui Patricio in goal. Callum Chambers, who's been pretty good so far for the most part. Jonathan Tarr, Golden Niga, Lazar, Alex Song. Unfortunately, I've had to make a promise to him to say, yeah, you're, you're going to play even though he's pants. Uh, Firmino, Henderson, Coutinho, Rondon and Tizard. And let's see who they have. Ah, that is the George Thorne, the Derby player. Signed for just under £6 million. Um, I don't really know too many of the others. Ah, Kevin Wimmer, I think, is that as well. Yes, the Austrian. At left back. And that's it. So, uh, they're the only ones I can look at on the top of my head. So, let's go. I mean, to stop this rot, really. Yes, we um, got the win against Zenit, but it wasn't... You know, let's be honest here, Leicester and St. Petersburg, as I say, they don't travel well, like many European teams, but I'm hoping uh, this formation should do as well. Now, in terms of their knowledge of the formation, it's obviously going to be very weak. Um, that will and can only improve as the weeks and months go on. So uh, I am going to be a bit forgiving when it comes to that, and goodness me, he should have scored. I didn't quite get his name there, but God, God, he should have scored. Okay, we are in fact going to go to counter here. So we always like to do when I go to sort of, you know, set at least semi tricky places, if not very tricky places, it's just play and counter. Just because it's just easier. <laughs> you don't have to worry about um, thinking, oh, am I too defensive? No, 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 you're defensive plenty. Because if you go in too defensive, as in defensive there, the mentality, literally defensive, uh, then you're not going to score. As far as I'm concerned, really, you're not going to score. 
you, you might score from a set piece, but that, that just says to me, I don't want to win, or I'm not trying to win. And oh my god. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, we're just being past death at the moment. And um, this has sort of been the case where teams see that, that type of pass, okay, it worked that time, but that was because there was no one there to really intercept it. But we seem to play that pass. Now, let me just check here. Have I got I need to change it to shorter passing, but as far as I can see, that doesn't actually change anything. Ooh. I also needed. I did play as well, narrow it and exploit the um, the flanks and everything. But I've, I've just turned all that off. I just want to see how they play with relatively few instructions on, just the sort of basics on, and then we can tweak it. But bear in mind, this is the first game I'm using with the new tactic. So, in fact, considering they're on, I should probably give it a go now. This was give or take what I was using at Milan, certainly at the start. Fortunately, not many highlights. Every time I bloody turn the camera on, honest to God, we've not even had a shot on target. We have, according to the ratings, been marginally the better team. Waiting for the thing is, if Coutinho and Firmino turn up, more than likely we're going to win the game. If in fact just one player turns up, then we're going to win it. Uh, I'm just going to ah, they've got Phil Jones. Is that yes? Okay, that's a strange one. Let's see who they've got on the bench. There's edit. Oh, they've got Jacko, Rose, uh, Hector, Drinkwater still there. So, ooh, could be tricky if they've got some decent subs. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I, I perhaps do need. Just change it to that again. Okay, I'm just going to leave and retain possession. We're just going to leave these for now. Well, you could you could hear my mouse click there. Come on. <laughs> Right, let's try it. Second half, hopefully, will be a little bit better. Perhaps need to get out of counter, but again, look at that pass. Like, we never did that in Milano, we did it very rarely. But it's like, you know, they, they just sort of lofted into the air a little bit, and the opposition almost always intercept it. If, if they're in and around uh, where they need to be, they're going to intercept it. And that's a, such a pathetic attempt from a free kick from Henderson. Right, here we go. Chance here, maybe for Firmino to rip it in. It's Chambers, Song, don't you shoot. <laughs> I just trust Alex Song to shoot from there. Off balance and everything. And there's Tizard. Oh, he's just on fire. He is unbelievable. Lazar, oh, we miss him. He is genuinely key, I think, to our team at the moment. You can tell the games he missed. He struggled. But he is very, very good. I'm already beginning to like this guy a lot. And um, James Tizard is just absolutely on fire. I'm going to make a change in a moment. I'm going to take off. I'm actually going to take Rand Rondon off. And I'm going to give one final opportunity to Daniel Sturridge. I'm going to say, this is it. Right here, right now. If he doesn't score or have a good game, I'm done. I know I said that was his last chance before. Um, but I think I might not have played him in his desired uh, role, not not as a complete forward. I think he was just playing as an advanced or a poacher. So I'm going to give him this. He's going to have 20 minutes. If he doesn't do anything, because bear in mind how much money he's on. He's on a lot of money. So I'm prepared to give him this final opportunity. Here's Coutinho. Storage, here we go. Chance for him to get a shot up. Found out it was blocked. Okay, it was blocked. <laughs> I let him off. I thought he drilled that one wide quite pretty well. Terribly, really. Oh, Alex Song, what are you doing? What? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Actually, did he just say, clears the ball to safety? He was literally the furthest player up the field. How can you clear? <laughs> what? Okay, that was a bit weird. It's, oh, chance for Sturridge. He's, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel Sturridge. Goodness me. He might have some use after all. Oh, right, okay, I'm going to take a team off. His um, condition is not looking good, so I'm going to bring Cherney on. And I think that'll do. I'll just leave it like that, I think. Finally, Daniel Sturridge, he might have finally found some form. Hopefully we can do something with him. Yeah, I think that that's a good three. Oh, with, oh God, I thought that was a penalty. <laughs> thought that's going to make it a, for a nervy ending. But there we go, 2-0 against Leicester. I think we might have just turned the corner there. Lazar coming back into the team. You can, as I say, he was injured for three or four weeks. And we missed him dearly. Man of the match here. Fantastic. Tizard with the goal once again. And Daniel Sturridge, who has been... In fact, watch, you'll see the news article now saying Sturridge finally relieved the score. 
There we go. 15 games. That, of course, stretches all the way back to last season when I wasn't here. But uh, he finally scored Lazar with the man of the match, as I say, with the assist as well. Who does he actually play for in real life? I'm intrigued. Uh, Palermo, by apparently. Um, I've signed him for £11 million, pounds, so, but he does look to be one of the more consistent players over the longest period. Okay, so let's have a look at what has done for the league. Now, I just want to put, as I said last time, we didn't have any board expectations. Uh, it is to simply qualify for the Europa League. Uh, that is the minimum aim I think we should really be um, trying to get in the Champions League. Let me just check. I'll just check the rules because when I left, a funny thing actually happened right as I left Milan. Italy's coefficient actually dropped. So they got one less Europa League spot. The Champions League spaces were um, unchanged, but they actually got one less Europa League spot. Let me just double check and make sure there hasn't been any more changes because I won't have been alerted to it. So three teams will qualify for the group stage. One will be the best place player for to find two teams for the group stage in the Europa League, and then one team's qualify for the third round qualify. Okay, that is absolutely fine. Just wanted to make sure and also just show you there. Now, um, I will show you as well how uh, other teams are getting on everything. This is how France looks. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain haven't lost yet, what a surprise, um, just a waste of time really isn't it looking there. Here is Bundesliga, Bayern Munich going very very well, uh, Dortmund who incidentally have uh, brought in Luis Enrique and Leverkusen brought in Tata Martino, I think it's Tata Martino, I think it is isn't it, and uh, here is Italy, I'll just show you Italy as well, uh, Milan who have hired Massimo Allegri who left the Italian job. Uh, after uh, that's the name of the film her uh, um, he left Italy and has gone subsequently here they've brought in a young lad called Fuba okay how much did they pay for him 40 million pounds and he has not scored yet <laughs> okay fair enough the captain's now daily blind and yeah they seem to be doing okay all right I guess so hopefully they won't uh, be too much of a target for us to take down yes good performance out of Lazar and they're already getting pissed off at the results. As you can see, match is not good, 44%. We need to get them back on side a little bit. Right, so that's going to do it for me. I hope you've enjoyed. I will probably rejoin you. I think let's do the Manchester United game. That'll be a good one. Got to do. In fact, yeah, there's quite a few good games. We've got Arsenal, then Everton. So we've just got to get through this horrible little period here. We've played likes of Derby, Watford, Southampton, Marseille twice. And then the really hard ones begin. Okay, so thank you for watching. I will see you probably tomorrow. So. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.